grateful for your time once again. Daily Graphic is starting the morning and says that President assents to, uh, assent to RTI Act. It comes into effect in January 2020. Also here, President asks Asamoajan to rescind decision. EC can't rig elections. The chair of the commission uh, there on Daily Graphic. The Ghanaian Times has the president's story. Uh, yesterday, Accra floods to reduce during raining season. Dredging engineers predict the president taught some uh, areas. And then group uh, minority demo against shutdown of two radio stations and the RTI uh, issue or stories also on the uh, Times this morning. The Daily Guide, I didn't lobby for EC job. The chairperson of the commission uh, here on the Daily Guide, the RTI uh, law is also on the Daily Guide. The finder carries a big one. RTI law is critical tool against corruption and for enhancing the quality of governance, the president there. And staff of closed down radio stations uh, sympathizers and back on demonstration. Those are some of the stories I have this morning. My guest to do the talk, and Eric Chum is a member of the NPP team is here in the studio. Eric, good morning. Good morning. Hope man. you're doing great. I'm doing fantastic. Thanks How are you? for I'm good too. Thanks for joining us. I'm still Madam, waiting for my time. It, it will come. It will come. <laughs> <laughs> it will come. Madam Roda Ayana is a member of uh, CPP. So also here. Good morning too. Good morning. Hope you are doing great. I'm fine. Thanks for your time with us. Uh, Sammy Jenfi is a national communications officer of the NDC. He's here. Good morning too. Hope you're doing great. We can't complain. Mm, okay, great. Now let's start with this one. Uh, I think it ties into it. Uh, the president has sent in the law, uh, a group uh, minority demonstration against shutdown of two stations, two radio stations, and staff of closed down radio stations, uh, sympathizers in back on demonstration. Uh, if you take a look at the story, as the, the Ghanaian Times put it, it said the president, uh, has um, uh, yesterday gave us to the Right to Information Act at the brief ceremony at the Jubilee House. So uh, finally, it has become a law. Its implementation has been deferred to next year due to financial consequences of its implementation. Uh, we're told that the law will afford the public uh, the opportunity to partake in policy formulation and other decision-making processes. That's the story. Uh, so far, the president said that it is a tool for fighting corruption and for enhancing the quality of governance. Yesterday also, uh, some uh, sympathizers of uh, some radio stations uh, that have been closed down also took to the streets of Accra and uh, they asked that the NCA should um, quickly uh, go in and restore the license of these radio stations. Uh, this morning, the news we're getting is that the convener of that group has been attacked in his house. Uh, we'll try and verify that. But let's start the conversation and tie uh, this into it. Eric, some have raised the concerns that uh, assenting or getting the RTI into um, implementation and also the fact that um, some journalists are suggesting that they, they are being attacked in their line of duty. Um, it doesn't occur well for our drive to ensure that we have a free uh, press, a vibrant one, and a truthful one. Good morning, uh, Bright. Can you rephrase that? Because at the one point, we we're talking about RTI. Right. Can you rephrase the so, question? So to, is to, the, the RTI is to make uh, the work of journalists and everyone who's interested in accessing information uh, free. Some have suggested, I mean, those who went on the station yesterday suggested that, well, if you bring in RTI and you close down radio stations, you, are, you also, you, you seem to be stifling press freedom. <laughs> Well, I actually do not find a correlation, but uh, to start with, good morning to uh, the viewers of TV3 this morning, to Madame and Sami. You're looking too serious. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> you won't even say good morning to your brother. <laughs> and good morning to you, right. Um, to be honest with you, I think that when we're talking about the RTI, it's probably the uh, longest existing bill that had meant to have gone through Parliament. I think it's actually um, overlapped five or six parliaments. Uh, so we're talking about well over 20 years in an attempt to uh, pass this particular bill. And I would commend the president for assenting to the bill. And then even in his inaugural address, <clears throat> 
made allusions to the fact that for us to be able to uh, truly uh, support our fight towards uh, the democracy that we've all uh, aspired to uh, in terms of freedom of information and all mm -hmm. that was imperative that we pass that law and it has now been assented to. Of course, commendation goes to Parliament, both the minority and the majority side for making sure that it comes to pass. The issue to do with the uh, financial implications was something that was also uh, discussed and debated at length in Parliament. And I think that there was an agreement that because it had implications, uh, it was important that uh, it was put into the next budget so that it can be fully uh, operational. And then it comes with putting together some kind of architecture to make sure because you actually have to employ people and uh, develop a database and uh, find uh, protocols to be able to access the information and all that. So we would give ourselves some time to be able to put that together. So it's a feather in the cap of the country. It's still a fledging democracy. Mm. Uh, it's going to enhance the uh, access to information. And then for me, I think that it has, apart from the, uh, the, the, the issue to do with where people would find information, it's also a deterrent. Because when you know that now in public office, everything that you, you do uh, would eventually find its way into the public domain, then you would be minded by that and work in a particular manner that will be devoid of any of the things that we've seen over the period. I've always maintained that, well, whilst it's easier to almost ascribe corruption to the politician and people in public offices and all that, but the truth of the matter is that I think that that in itself also allows for the public and even the media uh, by extension, to be able to also delve into things that have happened that have uh, bedeviled this country for a very long time. You know, so for instance, we are talking about the rains coming in the last few days where every part of the city, even apart from Accra, I think uh, Kumasi as well, is flooding. And you have professionals who are meant to be engineers, people who have gone and passed that a particular contractor has done their work properly and all of those things. And then you realize that there's even a defect in terms of the engineer. I'm not an engineer, but I mean, when you sit back and you look at some of the work that people have superintended over, all of these things, little, little things that I think that will come into the public domain, make sure that things are done properly, and it would essentially inure to the benefit of the entire uh, Ghanaian population. It's what we are looking at. Um, if you want to mix the assenting of the bill mm -hmm. and the RTI to what people are calling as uh, a stifling of the media or an affront to press freedom, I don't see it. You see, I think that consistency is key in having this conversation. I've maintained that. Um, it's important that we are seen to be applying the rules in a stricter sense. Now. When you do that, it does not mean that, I mean, and even the NCA itself have come out to say that, well, the various entities that have been affected can come back and reapply. But you see, we can't pick and choose certain aspects of the Constitution that we've all uh, agreed that we want to be governed by, just so it's expedient to others. I mean, that is wrong. Uh, I can uh, accept the fact that there has to be a way of resolving this uh, impasse. Mm. But for anybody to suggest that because uh, a state agency is doing what it's mandated to do, it becomes an affront on press freedom is wrong. To start with, as we speak, some of the entities that have been uh, stopped from using the spectrum, I think it's imperative that we establish that, are broadcasting using other means. Nobody has stopped them. Mm. You understand? You don't need a, a spectrum to write a newspaper, for instance, or to uh, broadcast using Facebook or other online materials or do all sorts of things. You don't need that. But the spectrum is 
the sole resource and a preserve for the state. It's a finance resource that belongs to everybody. So the fact that you have been given the spectrum does not mean that you own it. It's okay. owned by you. Okay, wrap up for me. So if you are not abiding by the rules and regulations that is meant to pertain for using a spectrum, the state has every right to take it off you. Because I also want, I think that if I had the chance and uh, I, I want to own a radio station, right? Why should okay. somebody own a radio station using a spectrum, a frequency that belongs to everybody and decide that in the name of press freedom, they don't want to pay for it? That in itself, it's not fair. It's, okay. it's not er Eric uh, transparent. Uh, way okay. of I'll things. come back so to you for a second. I see no reason that. why people would sort of try and impugn uh, if you like, an affront to the media and press freedom and all of that. You see, and this is not the first time the NC has done that. Okay. Last time I was going through Eric, I'm the grateful. record. Like, just, uh, just, uh, just to wrap up. Uh, I was going through the record. And I realized that somewhere in 2009 or so, Trice FM was shut down mm. for the same things. So okay. how come that is different today as, as opposed okay, to what I'm grateful. In the past? Let me get Madam Roda in. So, uh, Madam Roda, so uh, the, the RTI is now a, a law, uh, but uh, the suggestion is that the media that uh, will enhance the work seem not to be enjoying that kind of freedom. Good morning, Ghana. Mm. Um, right, I will not agree that it's the media that's supposed to be enjoying that freedom. It's for all of us. Mm. Um, in the first instance, we're all against corruption. We expect that with the RTI bill, information would come and we will be able to um, access that information and probably curl this whole idea of corruption. But um, to say that because the RTI bill has been passed, it will have that effect on information flow um, will be rather a bit too harsh, so to speak. I'd rather say that we do need information, and I don't see why any government would want to gag the media. Um, I keep asking myself, I mean, it looks like we're listening to one side and not trying to listen to the other side. Um, the one side is that we're going according to the law. You have a spectrum, you're supposed to pay for it. We're all supposed to be doing this and that. And then the other side is saying, we tried. To, 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 make, do the right to do thing. the right thing. We try to make uh, uh, do with what we were supposed to do. We went there and they refused to take it. You know, that kind of thing. Now we don't know the truth. You understand? So this is something that for me is mind boggling. How come one group is saying we did, and we've seen all sorts of documents coming out, and, and then the NCA also coming out and saying, no, um, we asked you to do this and you did not do it. You know, um, right, sometimes um, you tend to look at things in so many ways. I, I lived in a house where for about four years the electricity company of Ghana never came to read my meter, but I consistently paid something every month. So finally when um, prepaid came, I was able to access the access. prepaid, and then from that calculation, they, they found out I had paid maybe one year over. You understand? So some systems work. So could it be that these people really went there trying to rectify these anomalies. But that's what they claim. You, you understand? That is what they are claiming. And then we are also hearing the NCA saying, no, you know, we gave them all the opportunities and everything. And then you, you're looking at the act, that, which says that at least give them 30 days. Were they given the 30 days to make that um, presentation? If not, why? You understand? Then we have a whole ex-president coming to say, look, it looks like these people are just doing it to pro-NDC stations. And that's how it's looking. And that is why the whole thing is looking another way. Everybody feels that it's either witch hunting or it's uh, persecution for, for, for uh, press freedom where the opposition is concerned. But I don't think maybe that is the real reason. Um, I think that this impasse has to be settled, and it has to be settled quickly because it's giving us a bad press all over the world, uh, making it look like we're being intimidated, we're being oppressed. You understand? Our freedoms are being taken away from us. Um, and with, with the passing of the RTI bill, if you cannot hear the other side, because now I listen to the radio, and I can say that mo almost all radio stations are pro-MPP. No, that kind of no almost, yes. Everybody. Kind of I, I listened to radio yesterday <laughs> and I was like, I kept tuning in, trying Which to get one? Oh, I, I listened to peace, I listened and peace to is pro and PP. No, no, I am just saying that <laughs> most of the time when you when you listen, mm. because at the end of the day, let's face it, we are in this country, we listen to radio. Right. I know which I, I, I have a feeling of which radio station will speak for whom? For government and for who government and who position. will speak 
you know, for opposition. If I, if I do 3FM, I know where it's going. I, if I do uh, Peace, I know where it's going. If I do Ahuto, I know where it's going. TV3. Yeah, I mean. Where does it go? That's what I'm saying. If I, if, if, if I listen to TV3, TV I think they are just in the middle. They, 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 are, they are okay. You, you understand what I'm saying? So if I listen to Ahuto, I'll get all serial callers coming from the NDC. If I listen to Peace FM, most of them will be coming from the MPP. So that's how we look at it. And this is how I feel, that this is how it goes. And so if the RTI bill has come, and they are supposed to be the champions of this bill, to be able to get us all the information we want, then we don't want one side to be the only one speaking. We want to hear from the other side. And therefore, government must make it its duty, or the NCA must make it its duty to actually sit and, and talk about this. Let's resolve this issue. And, and let's see who is right and who is wrong. If it, if it means going back to court, like um, they previously went, let's go back to court and let the court pronounce so that we'll know exactly who are not doing the right thing. Because as it stands now, um, I think that people are beginning to feel like nobody wants to listen to the N NDC side. And that is wrong and that is bad. Because yeah. I, 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 I sit back and I say, look, if we don't want criticism, mm. You know, then we can all sit and, and, and be singing praises, hallelujah, hallelujah, at the end of the day to be crucify him, crucify him, which is not the best that we want. So um, the RTI bill has come, it's been passed, it's going to take a while because we're talking about monies that we need to set up the, the whole establishment, the whole business and everything. So it's not going to be like this year maybe or next year because it's going to be the next budget. I think next budget. Next so the next budget, which is coming next year, which means that for now, we, we are putting our things in place. So while we are putting our things in place, let's solve this particular impasse. And let's get um, government or NCA and the affected stations mm. sitting and talking. Because at the end of the day, we, we all want the information flow. Grateful. Sami, uh, so the, the, that's, that's where we are. Um, it, it, the bailers are centered to, uh, the, and, and we can say that, well, that's f good for us. For us as uh, media houses, we're happy, we're excited. But on the other hand, if you listen to those who, who were on the demonstration yesterday, the argument is that you, you're giving us this and you're taking this away. Brian, thank you. Um, let me go straight to the point because of time constraints. Mm. What is the essence of the right to information? Then? It is to give effect to the constitutionally guaranteed right to information of every citizen and to provide an effective tool to help us in our fight against graft and corruption of all forms. When you have information, what do you do with information? You express the information. Mm. And so passing or assenting to the right to information law at a time when the right to free expression and the right to press freedom is under attack, for me, is meaningless. Because without that freedom to express the information one has, then there is no, if you like, significance in whatever information you have. Because the essence of gathering information is to express the information. You understand? And that is why I want to commend the free media vanguards for the protest match they organized yesterday in defense of the freedom of expression. You see, Bright, we are not in ordinary times. These are dark and sad days for Ghana. Because in my whole adult life, never have I seen press freedom and the right to free expression come under attack like we are seeing now. What is happening in Ghana, for me, is totally unacceptable. Press freedom is on the decline. Critical media voices are being suppressed and oppressed. People have lost their lives in Kwame Nkrumah's Ghana, democratic Ghana. Today, an investigative journalist, Ahmed Swale, is no longer with the living. He's been killed. What was his crime? He did an investigation, exposed corruption in football administration in Ghana. That also exposed the fact that a friend to the president, president of the Ghana Football Association, was using the name of our president to demand bribes and so on.
So because of that, a certain MPP member of parliament went to town, threatened him with death, threatened him with harm, asked people to attack him. We sat down and looked, did nothing. The president looked on unconcerned. He's been killed, leaving behind a very young family, an innocent wife and an innocent you know, a child, if not children. What is happening to Manasseh Azuri? Today, he's moving from one place to the other, seeking for safety for his life. His only crime is that he did an investigation exposing the duplicity and the deceitfulness of this government relative to the fight against vigilantism. He made us know that this government had, had, had given a state facility, the Usu Christian Board Council, to a paramilitia group for their nefarious activities. And because of that, it threatened his life. He had to take the president of the Media Foundation of West Africa to raise this on the international you know, press freedom day we just commemorated. What has happened to Edward Aditi of Star FM? Just because he exposed corruption in this government, exposed how a minister of state, Roxin Bukhari, was supporting Chinese galamseyers and covering up you know, corruption in the judiciary, people went after him. What has happened to your own friend, Kwame Menka, who is a convener of the free media vanguards, the group who demonstrated yesterday, only this night, his house has been attacked by criminals, his vehicle has been vandalized, properties vandalized, just this night. What kind of Ghana are we living in? That people cannot tolerate divergence? People cannot tolerate dissent? What is happening? Radio stations have been closed, and when you talk about it, our brothers in the MPP say that, oh, the, NDC, the NC is, is only enforcing laws. What law are they enforcing? Tell me. Show me what law the NCA is enforcing. Who told you that the affected radio stations have not paid for their spectrum? Who told you that? In the case of Radio Good, if you look at the chronology of events, that paper which was published by the NCA, check item 17 and 18 of the NCA's own document. They say that on the 12th of July, 2019, Radio Gold made a full application for the renewal of the alliances and paid no, no, no. all no, no, no. application no. fees. They did that on the 12th of January, 2019. However, the NCA says that we were unable to process your application because we were in court with DIBA. Was there an injunction prescribing them to process the application? Did they tell Radio Go that we are unable to process your application because we are in court with Giba? When the tribunal made its decision and they eventually decided, per their weird interpretation of that decision, that all radio stations who are not applied in time for the renewal of their licenses are supposed to be deemed as fresh applicants and not. Did they inform the affected radio stations? Did they give them any time to comply with that new understanding? These stations had already paid money. The same thing applies to Radio SYZ. They had already paid money. You didn't get back to them. You didn't tell them anything. You didn't. You see, any first year student at the law school will tell you that in interpreting or applying any law, you must read into it the principles of fairness, due process, and natural justice. At least give people the opportunity to remedy their breaches. Give people the opportunity to be heard. You so, think that so if we had so, acted so that you way, would take NCA side that they, they have been trying to reach these They have tried what? Persons. They gave Radio Gold a letter a day after they shut them down. Radio SYZ, they gave them a letter and instantaneously they told them open the letter and shut down. Instantaneously. In the company of fully armed security operatives. Are we in Syria or, or Afghanistan? Yesterday, okay, another radio station... Radio Adunu in the Bruno Hanford region. They got their license expired. They applied for renewal five days after, paid all the necessary fees. The NCA told them that they had not attached their audit report, and so they should go and come back. They came back 17 days after, attached their audit report. They were slapped with a penalty of 1.7 billion OCDs. That penalty was declared to be unconstitutional, unlawful, and null and void by the tribunal. It was reduced to 51,000 as penalty. They paid that penalty. In 2017, only yesterday, NCA officials went there and said, because of this new ruling, take your money, 51,000. We are shutting you down now, now. They've shut the radio stations down. The radio station down. Right. So, Brian, what right. is happening right. is unacceptable. It is yes. indefensible. Eric, he, he's wrapping up. So that I'll, I'll if we to. had acted that way, Oman FM wouldn't have still been in existence. You think that President Kufo couldn't have done this? You think that J.J. Rawlings couldn't have done this? Apartheid was a law. 
colonialism was a law. The Preventive Detention Act, which they so much detest, was a law. You see, regulation is important, but how it is done is more important. Okay. Because regulation, right, in wrapping up, wrap up let's do a regulation second round can be this. used to reform, improve, and build. And it can also be used to kill and destroy. It is unfortunate that our brothers in the MPP have decided to use regulation to kill and destroy. So my point is simple. Mm. The credentials of our president, who is a vain, glorious believer in human rights, the rule of law, and press freedom is at stake. We must not allow Ghana to decline on this loop. This is not the democracy okay. we all fought for. And I want to encourage all media men and all progressive forces who are fighting against this oppression. Let us not give in and let's not give up. This battle is not going to be an easy one. There will be casualties, there will be fatalities, but if we stand our ground, and as required by our national anthem, we decide to resist oppressors' rule, we will I'm prevail grateful. against all those. I'm grateful. Oppressors. Let me go to Madam uh, uh, Rhoda Yara. Uh, Madam Rhoda, so, uh, I mean, you, you <laughs> had, had, had Sami. Uh, uh, yes, I'll, I'll come to you. Okay. So you just relax. You, you heard Sami, and I saw you shook your head at a point in time. But, uh, perhaps, is it simply the fact that uh, the law is being used to suppress uh, 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 these houses? Or, as uh, Eric said, we must ensure state institutions are doing the right thing, and they are working uh, as we, we, they have been mandated to do? Um, right, I'd like to play the devil's advocate this mm -hmm. morning. You see, as politicians, we do know how to bite. Uh, is it a situation where some media houses, you know, were prompted? Get your, your documents in right. order and everything because we are going to hit other um, uh, media stations. You understand what I'm saying? From what Sami Jemfi is saying, these are media stations that have tried. They've done everything trying to stay, you know, on the air. And somehow their, their efforts have been thwarted by authority. Now, I'm asking this because um, if it is true what Sami Jemfi is saying, then the NCA is being unfair. And that's why I'm saying that both of them will have to tell us. We don't know the truth anymore as a country. Um, um, MPP is telling us, or the NCA is telling us something else, and Sami Jemfi's group, as the NDC, is also saying something else. So we don't even know the truth for those of us who are in the middle there. Um, information is crucial. It is important that everybody gets to voice out what he or she feels like voicing out. Mm. And no one person should sit down and decide who should be heard and who should not be heard. So I'm saying if um, we have stations which are pro-NDC, as they now claim, NDC has accepted that these stations that are being closed are pro-NDC, are perceived to be pro-NDC. Mm. Have we heard NPP saying that the stations that are not closed are pro-NPP? They don't want to say that. Are you getting me? But like I sat here and said, I said, those stations that I listen to, I find them to be pro-MPP, which means that as politicians, we have a right to be able to keep some people afloat and to close some people down. And that is exactly what is happening. And that is not fair. We need to have a very, very straightforward way of dealing with this issue. Mm. We need to hear decent. If people are talking negative, so be it. Because everything is not about psychophancy. We should not always want to hear the good, the good, the good. You should hear the other side. And if as Ghanaians, today I, I can't re open my radio station because I always tune in. Tune here, listen a bit, and tune in. And it's one way. You understand? Then I ask myself, is this just another, it's another way, actually, of gagging information from the public? Because we are expecting those, my, my, my party, the CPP, hasn't been in power for so long. Mm. So whatever decisions have been taken in the, over the last 20 or so odd years, we might not know. So we don't have maybe all the documentations. We don't have all the, the facts governing certain cases, which makes it impossible for us to sometimes contribute. You understand? Mm. So at the end of it, maybe the right information will now allow us to be able to access that information to also uh, make our point. But at the end of the day, we listen to the, the, the government in power, and we listen to the opposition. Now, if we're only listening to the government in power, you know, and we are in opposition, and the largest opposition party that should also feed us with information, we are not getting. And the government of the day's information is such that it's out there, but we are not sure whether it's the truth or not. Then there is definitely something wrong. That is my point. It's it grateful. No, no, uh, Samia, I'm coming okay, to, come to, to you. To you. Uh, you, have, you have your turn. Yeah. Uh, Eric. Madam and uh, Sami. I mm. think that, you see, one, Sami peddled some untruths. Now, to start with, the issue to do with the shutting down of this station did not start today. The NCA in 2017 
did an audit and came up with the audit report that suggested that about 132 radio stations had different infractions mm. with the NCA law, right? And that they proceeded to um, ask some of them to even shut down, and some of them were fined, given certain penalties and all that. Then, the stations themselves, with the support of GIBA, went to the electronic... Eight stations. Eight, yeah, to yeah, the yes. Eight, not eight. all the ones. Okay, one. yes. Eight, uh, basically led by GIBA, went to court to seek some reliefs. And the court was categorical that without the authorization, which is basically the licensing for the spectrum, which expires and needs to be renewed every five right. years. Right. They are deemed not to actually even exist in the face of the law. So the court asked the NCA to refund those monies to these stations and ask them to reapply. Right. <laughs> right? That is a court. Which paragraph of that tribunal? No, yeah, but, but, but you can, I'm, I'm proud to refund money. Uh, yes. Uh, which paragraph? Yeah. So I have read, I have the full decision. No, that did, did, did uh, exist. Uh, and that okay, did, Sabi, you, you yes, allow him. Let me just <laughs> note, note it down. You, let me, you can note time. it down. <laughs> you see, so then we come full circle. This conversation surrounding a 30-day notice and everything doesn't actually come into play when the entity itself does not have authorization to be using the spectrum okay. to start with. Now, I'm saying that, you see, you can take... It's like every conversation. You can take different angles to the conversation, play the devil's advocate and all of those things. But the truth of the matter is that there's a core mandate of the NCA. The NCA does not deal only with radio stations mm. when it comes to the usage of spectrums. So you're talking about airlines, you're talking about uh, security agencies, other state agencies and all that, telcos, who use these things to do their work. And it's a finite resource. And I'm saying that the same media that is meant to be the bastions of uh, transparency, free freedom of speech, and doing the right thing and acting government and everybody within the space to do the right thing, decides that we are not going to do it in the name of expediency, in the name of freedom of expression. However, we are going to use the same platform to push for this. It makes absolutely no... Okay. It, it, there's, there's a, there's a okay. divergence in there. Uh, I'm okay. saying that. Right. Listen, no, allow him the to NCA has stated that there's a room, mm. there's room for resolution of, of, this, of this matter. matter. Okay. You understand? But you see, it also has to be anchored in a certain principle. Are we saying that in this country, you see, and the thing is that it goes Quickly, to, Eric, yeah, can are we saying that in this so country, that touch on the anytime record. the rules or uh, the law is applied, it has to be uh, pandered. I mean, you, you have to pander to people's whims just because they will be affected by it. Otherwise, we can't do anything. Okay. Because you have... Uh, Eric, I'm you, can, you, you, uh, you see, I'm you, we, we, have, uh, we have examples of people uh, uh, doing the wrong things, right. and we use different ways of trying to get them out of it. Thanks. There's Thanks, absolutely Eric. no okay. uh, motivation of government to, one, stifle press freedom. Okay. Now, the record speaks for itself. Okay. Listen, oh. this uh, is uh, the government. Eric, please, no, I'm grateful. No, 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 Eric, I'm grateful. Let me get to now. Summit to react so that we can move on. Eric, I'm grateful. Because we have okay. very limited our rush yes. to the points. Number one, the argument my brother Eric Chum just made is very self-indicting. He has admitted that the electronics, uh, electronic the communication the tribunal, tribunal declared as unlawful and for that matter null and void the penalties that the NCA imposed on the 131 D14 stations mm -hmm. because they didn't, in 2017. Uh, they, they didn't exist. That in itself is an admission that the NCA doesn't always get it right. When they were doing that, when they were imposing those unlawful, okay. unconstitutional okay. penalties, kind of they told us what they are telling us now, okay. that they were enforcing the law. Kind of that was the same chorus you guys sang. They were enforcing the law. But when the matter went before the tribunal, the tribunal said, look, you don't even understand your own laws. You are misapplying it. And for that matter, they quashed it. That is number one. And I think that is very instructive. Number two, listen. There was a certain understanding between the NC and the 14 radio stations that if you submit your application for renewal of license outside the stipulated time, that is three months, 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 months before the expiration of your license, Why? 
Why? It will come with a penalty. Why? Okay. And so they allowed the radio stations to us uh, to add. Uh, Why to would you allow? Hold on, him? hold on, Eric. Hold on, Eric. Please, Eric, please hold allow him. I, I sat Eric, down here Eric, and to you. Please allow him. Please. 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 So, so they requested for application for renewal from these affected stations, and these applications were accompanied with all the necessary fees, and they accepted it and told them that we we're going to process it. So even granted, without admitting that the interpretation they are placing on the tribunal ruling is correct, i.e. If you didn't apply within time, your application for renewal no longer holds. Mm -hmm. You have to come by way of a fresh application. Because that is a new understanding, and you cannot apply laws retroactively, the fair t t thing for you to do is that for those radio stations who already have pending applications for renewal before you, who have paid some monies, at least you draw the attention to the fact that, oh, this is what we thought. But now the understanding has changed for this ruling. So remedy it. Come by way of a fresh application. Pay the necessary fresh application fees. Mm. If what you have with us is more than what you are supposed to pay, we will make refunds. If you are supposed to pay us more, top up. That is all. You don't mm. refund your monies and tell them that we are shutting you today without giving them any... Did they give you any interest for the refunds? Nothing. Even in the case of Adonu no, FM, they pay 51,000, they refund the 50,000. Okay. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Yeah, hold on. Go, 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 go. Even if, hold on, please, please, you can, you can, uh, please. Eric, you allow him to wrap up. This is coming from right. the chief executive of right. Radio uh, Gold. Right. Yeah. This is the uh, NCA's own uh, statement they issued, chronology of events. Look at paragraph 19. He says, the company, this is Radio Good, submitted a complete renewal application and paid the application fees. This is according to NCU. The application was, however, not processed due to the case filed by Giba. On okay. So, 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 so this is okay. what I'm saying. Okay. Facts, Rapa, let's take a comment and come back to the His own colleague, uh. Dr. Okoboy, sat in the studios of Peace FM yeah, and right. condemned what no, is going you on. See Sammy, you see, Sammy, Sammy. this well, is well, not well, about well, politics. So, well, when we talk well, about free well, expression, well, it is a right well, we all well, share. Well, this is well, about Ghana. This is about democracy. So, let's not. Play, is he, is he, play, play do Eric, and Eric, politics please, with everything. Eric, Eric, please relax. No, Allah the point him. I am making here, he the no, point I am making he has not, he has not been talking. Why <laughs> must <laughs> Kwame Menka it's lead Dr. Kuba, a protest here, match only him. yesterday, only to have his house vandalized? Today, the wife, the children are all traumatized. They didn't go to school. Why must we subject media men to such threats, such acts of intimidation and harassment just because they are doing their work, just because they are dissenting? Okay. But so my uh, point is that uh, even, if, yeah, even if the radio stations are there, let's even grant them that they are right and we are wrong. What happened to due process, natural justice, and fairness? The president is a lawyer. As long as the minister for communication is a lawyer, they know that even when people err, Due process must be followed. They, that is why the law says if somebody has given an opportunity to remedy their breach, hear their side and all that. In a democratic country, you go to a radio station, at the time they are broadcasting a program live, and you order them shut down in the company of armed operators, and you shut down, shut, shut them down instantaneously, only for uh, you to okay. come and tell us a quick okay. and good story that, Sammy, oh, I'm we grateful. are open for, we are Let's amenable take to some comments from After you have shut them down, Okay, you know how many jobs will be lost as a result of we'll that we'll come back to the electoral act. commission. And you are defending Okay, Grateful. counsel, rest your case. Grateful. Thank you very much. Power we start off with Tilapia. And it we says, right to information right. behind the scenes, Tilapia has got a cartoon for us. And it, tells, it shows a gentleman, uh, looks like the president, who's signing, uh, giving presidential assent to the right to information uh, law. It has an old Sanyo television, for those of you who are too young to remember. It has two people watching, and behind the scenes, uh, there's a microphone, a pen, and a scroll uh, all stringed together, and uh, the supposes that the media is, is crying to be heard. Free Media Vanga, that's it. The organization that uh, Kwame Menka, Prince Menka, uh, yesterday led to go out there on a protest, and they gave the NCA one week ultimatum to uh, reactivate Radio Good and XYZ, or else, or else what? Well, good morning to you, Brights. The MPP has shown that they are highly incompetent upon assuming office. The way and manner they are dealing with our security is very preposterous. Hmm, they should remember that power is transient. No condition is permanent. Dani in Takwa, cyanide. And a teacher is murdered. No news. A school is burnt. Breaking news. Ghana for us. Bright, we thank the president for signing the RTI bill, but let the president and government know that if the media, house, and journalists 
do not have peace and freedom. The documents won't make sense. Let government action speak louder than words. Era Madenta New side. The last one, one I was says, indeed, we have to acknowledge and applaud President Akufuado for giving assent to the law on RTI. When the RTI bill applies properly, it would provide a critical tool against corruption and enhance the quality of governance and accountability in the country. And uh, good morning. I'm Deborah from Gulf City in Tema. The drainage issue can be controlled if we change our mindset and our attitude. We're later everywhere, and this causes the floods. The government can spend a whole lot to construct more drains, but if some policies are not implemented on littering, people will continue to litter, hence giving more room for flooding. Good morning, Bright. I think the MPP is using more muscles than their brains, while the NDC is using more brains than their muscles. This can easily land MPP in opposition. Moses in Pig Farm. Uh, good morning, TV3. Why are politicians making life so unbearable for us? Today this, tomorrow that. Why? Ghana is a peaceful country. We're tired dancing to their music, ABBA. Uh, man, 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 Kante Matthew in Atibubu says the flood situation in Ghana, especially parts of Accra, won't continue to stay with us forever unless there is an attitudinal change among Ghanaians in terms of sanitation awareness. The president alone cannot solve the problem unless we are all involved in finding solution to this perennial uh, situation. Who says dredging the door uh, is the solution to flooding in Ghana? We have gotten the fundamentals wrong and until we change our behavior, no president can help us. Let's allow the laws to work. John McCoy is in the of Ghana Public Health uh, School. There's no difference between the yesterday demonstrators and some youth or hooligans resisting lawful arrest by police. It's free press. Uh, does it mean uh, you do not obey the laws? I was ashamed when I saw some of our lawmakers in the demonstration. NCA should be allowed to work. Finito. Nana. Uh, Ajanan. Ajanan. Okay. President visits dredge masters to inspect a door dredging. Good job. It's a job for the boys. Are we not shy doing the same job over and over again for years? I think this dredging has made some people rich power because every two, three years we dredge. So we can't uh, find a permanent solution to stop this. Uh, too much mediocrity in Ghana. Always fetching water into the basket. Good morning, Brian. The coach is destroying the national team by making it black stars, MPP black stars. They will be eliminated from the group stage, mark my words. And uh, is that Andrew belongs to the government of the day? The coach has milked the national team with politics. Okay, that's your suggestion, Dennis, in Wale Wale. See, John. See, John is the best captain so far. Uh, people are just being jealous. He should lead the team, yes. If not because in Ghana, a coach and player at the, at the time, why should uh, this be an issue? Ghanaian, be Ghanaians, Derek in Bongo. Senior Bright, good morning to you and your panelists out there. It's very unfortunate that the NDC led by JDM will not come to power again. I'm in a Volta region, a flower in the Ketu South municipality. I can assure you that since we voted for our MP, Honorable Fifi Kwete, uh, we have not seen him again for eight good years. We have not seen any project being constructed in the Ketu South municipality. Uh, mean, meanwhile, we call ourselves the World Bank of the NDC. We won't vote for NDC again. If they like, they should go to hell. Uh, God's way, Asuma Zonam in the Volta region. Police officer caught on camera taking bribe. And so what? Go and mount pressure on BCU's case. Are the police not also human beings? He is with, that is without sin. Uh, may he cast the first. So good morning, Bright. Should, why should we contract uh, a forty million uh, a contract of forty million balloon to over hundred million? Nanado, please. Your family is chopping Ghana's money too much. Gideon in Kotobabi. Walanyo Nakucha says, why can't Radio Gold and X Y Z guys uh, contribute money to pay their debt for, to MCA to restore their frequency? If they can mobilize for supporters to demonstrate, why sh we should allow? state institutions to work. They should go and renew their licenses and stop the jokes. Just feel sad for the NDC foot soldiers because they do the dirty works but uh, left out when the loot uh, items are being shared. Ex-President Mohammed then called the IU brothers to the seat of government and talked to them to receive their decision not to play for Ghana again. We don't hear this as a front page news. What has changed in President Kufuado and Jan's case? Ghana for you if you should him what it. Okay. Okay, right. grateful. Let's, let's, well, in fact, we have to wrap up. Uh, we couldn't discuss the EEC's issue. So, uh, Eric, let me start from you. Let, let's do the wrap up. No, I think that um, to start with, we've been clamoring for this RTI for a long time. Um, you know, sometimes it's, it's easier to focus on the negatives and everything, but we've come a long way. This is a, a democracy that is still going, growing. We um, would have some issues to disagree with and everything. But like the president said, that's something that should be one of the pillars of our democracy as we go forward. It would help in the fight against corruption. It becomes a deterrence. Um, it supports even the state actors and people in public uh, service to also even tell their sides of the story. 
And so when it happens like that, this whole idea of uh, fake stories and the media picking up a, a story or concocting a story and putting out, there will be a thing on the past. So it can't be justified mm. because you can't say that you don't have the right to that particular information when now it's easier to be able to have access to that. So for us as politicians, uh, I think that we should embrace it. There was this perception that uh, both uh, minority and majority over the period had not really been keen on it, but I think that it would actually be one of the uh, our saving graces, if you like, so that the focus and the, it will not be just on politicians, but in everybody who actually has or holds public office. So it's, it's something that we should we should celebrate. Um, and kudos to the parliament for passing it. And the president, mm. of course, deserves commendation and okay. still showing conviction I'm that grateful. he wanted that to go I'm through. grateful. Let, let me get Madame Roda to come in. Yeah, I'm, I'm also excited that the RTI bill has been pa passed, um, especially now that we're so um, much fighting corruption. But then I, I also say that also with a, a little, um, what can I say, um, with, with, with slight reservations, because we had the same euphoria when we had the special prosecutor's office being um, opened. And we all thought that everything was going to go very smoothly. And up till now, we have not had one prosecution from the special prosecutor's office. So um, this is an RTI bill that has to go through a whole lot of processes. Um, first and foremost, as Ghanaians, we don't even know the processes. We don't know how long it's going to take, how long it will take to get a case through yeah. before it, anything we need is to done. Pass an ally. Yeah, so mm -hmm. now they're talking about passing an ally. So we don't even know how long this whole idea of getting it even working might take another few years if we're not careful, because it's not going to go for budgeting sure, and, and all the due process. So um, I'm hoping that the same parliament that made this possible, if they're going to be here come 2020 or whatever, or if they're going to continue, will be able to pass um, all allies and whatever that we need for this RTI to be effective and also for us to be able to fight corruption. Okay. Grateful. Sami? Right, let me, I associate myself fully with the views expressed by Madam. What I want to add to it is that the right to information is totally meaningless unless it is linked with a respect for freedom of expression and media freedoms. And I would advise government to respect that. It is not for nothing that a whole chapter, chapter 12 of our 1992 constitution, is dedicated to press freedom. Suppressing media men, threatening them, intimidating them, harassing them like we are seeing now, is totally unacceptable. In the last press freedom index which was released, we have slipped you know, several steps back. This government must not take us back. They must focus on the main reason why Ghanaians voted them into office. We voted them into office for them to implement their utopian lofty campaign promises and make life better for us. What is happening is symptomatic of a government which has lost focus at the time. Flats are killing people in this country. At a time, cost of living is so high and unbearable for the vast majority of Ghanaians. At a time that corruption is on the rise and all that, what you expect any responsible government to do is to focus on bread and butter issues, is to focus on delivering factories, delivering sustainable jobs for the youth and people of this country, is to focus on creating an enabling environment for businesses to thrive, for the media to grow and so on. What we are, we are, we are seeing is shameful. And I solidarize with Kwame Minka. Uh, we will go and see him, we stand with him. We will continue to fight until the oppressor stops oppressing us. Thank I'm you grateful very much. for your time. Sami Jemf is the National Communications Officer of the NDC. Madam Rodayana, a member of the CPP. Rutum is a member of the NPP. Gentlemen and ladies, I'm grateful for your morning.